As we cross the threshold into a new year, ask the Lord to give you a new beginning of obedience to Him. Aren't you glad that our God is a God of new beginnings, not of endings? I want to bring you to a great story today in Genesis chapter number 41. It is the story of Joseph's life, not at the beginning, but at the end. You know, in Scripture, the Bible says, better is the end of a thing than the beginning thereof. That's because in the beginning, you can't see it all. Uh, it's not all together. But when you come to the end, God truly does make everything beautiful in His time. Joseph, of course, who was sold into slavery and betrayed by his own brothers and all of that, now is made fruitful and is blessed in an amazing way. In Genesis 41, verse 50, we read, And unto Joseph were born two sons. Before the years of famine came, which Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On, bare unto him. And Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh. For God, said he, hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. And the name of the second called he Ephraim. For God hath caused me to be fruitful in the land of of my affliction. He has two boys. The names are Manasseh and Ephraim, and the names are chosen very carefully because each one represents a great truth. And I think a truth that all of us need today. First, everybody needs a Manasseh. What does Manasseh mean? Forgetting. Forgetting. This is a word about Joseph's past. He said, God said, He hath made me forget all my toil and all my father's house. You know, God is the divine forgetter. Aren't you glad that He forgets our sins? He cast us behind Him. Praise the Lord for that. And then the miracle is that He can make us to forget. He can so give you a new beginning in Him. Remember, He's the God of new beginnings. Such a new beginning that you don't even remember or think of what happened in your old life. He starts that at salvation. This new beginning starts with a new birth. But he continues it all through life, the supernatural work of grace. And notice he says he's made me to forget all my toil. That's everything he had to endure. And then all my father's house. That doesn't mean he didn't love his father or his family anymore. We see at the end of the story he takes care of them. But he means by that, I've been able to forget all that I've lost. I'm not sitting around thinking about all that I've lost. And may I ask you, do you need a Manasseh today? Is it possible... Uh, that at this juncture in life and in the year, you need to stop and say, Lord, I want to forget. I want to lay those things aside, the things I've endured and the things that I, I feel like I've lost. I'm going to leave that with God. I'm going to believe that you are able. i point out something very interesting. Joseph named the son Manasseh before the circumstances changed. His father has not yet come. He's not yet reconciled to his brothers. He doesn't yet see his family till you get to chapter 42. And yet it's in chapter 41 that he gets a new beginning. You see, if you wait till your circumstances change, you'll never start again. You need a Manasseh today. Spurgeon said, Memory is a very treacherous thing about the best things. But a strange perversity, by a strange perversity, it treasures up the refuse of the past and permits priceless treasures to lie neglected. Think of that. It is very treacherous. Because if we're not careful, the only thing we want to remember are the worst things. And we forget the blessings and the goodness of God. And so it begins with a day where we say, by God's grace, I'm going to forget. And then the second son was named Ephraim. Now Ephraim's name means fruitful. So watch this. The forgetting dealt with his past, but the fruitfulness deals with his present and the prospect of the future. I love the wording here. He says, God hath caused me. Remember, God made me forget. Now God hath caused me to be fruitful. My brother, my sister, God calls us every good thing. It's not me, it's not you, it's all the Lord. And then he not only caused him to be fruitful, but get this, God caused him to be fruitful in the land of his affliction. Not in spite of, in the midst of. We talk about the dark days that we live in. 
But my friend, it's in dark days that God does His brightest work. It's in difficult gardens where God grows His most beautiful fruit and His, His most beautiful flowers. The Lord's growing you today right where you are. Andrew Murray, the famed author of A Bygone Generation, was a pastor in South Africa. During a particular time in his ministry, he was going through a real valley, a real difficulty. And he wrote in his journal these words, Let me say, I am here by, by God's appointment, in His keeping, under His training, for His time. Let me repeat that. Let me apply it to you. You are there by God's appointment, in His keeping, under His training, and for His time. And if you'll allow it, by faith, like Joseph, today can be your Manasseh and your Ephraim. Your day where you say, I believe that God is going to make me to forget and God is going to cause me to be fruitful. When I was just a boy, I was required to learn a poem by Susan Coolidge. I really don't know that much about Coolidge or even about the history of the poem. But the opening lines have come to me again and again through the years. It simply said this, Every day is a fresh beginning. Every morn is the world made new. You who are weary of sorrow and sinning, here is a beautiful hope for you, a hope for me and a hope for you. All the past things are past and over. The tasks are done and the tears are shed. Yesterday's errors let yesterday cover. Yesterday's wounds which smarted and bled are healed with a healing which night has shed. I would say to you, it's not just that we have a new day, My friend, we have the God of new beginnings. And the Lord wants you this day to have a Manasseh. This day to have an Ephraim. This day to have a brand new beginning. And to move into the new year with definite faith in God. When I come to the end of a certain period of time or to a new beginning, there are six definite things I always try to do. Can I give them to you quickly? Number one, I spend some time in reflection. Would you spend some time today just reflecting on the goodness of God? Think about Him. Write down the blessings of the Lord. Gratitude's the ground for building a life that honors God. Number two is examination. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me. Know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the way everlasting. What needs to change in me? Is there anything hindering God's work in my life? Number one, reflection. Number two, examination. Number three, confession. Once God shows you, call it by name. Call it what He calls it. Say it. And if we confess our sins, He's faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Then number four, elimination. Let's get rid of lesser things. Identify specific things, even good ones, that might be keeping you from God's best. What clutter can you remove from your life? What what clutter can you remove from your schedule so you can give God your undivided attention? And then, number five, concentration. Concentrate on the right priorities. Be definite. List the things that are important in light of eternity. Give your energy to them. And then finally, dedication. Giving yourself afresh and new to His control, yielding every part of yourself to the loving Lord. Reflection, examination, confession, elimination, concentration, and dedication. By God's grace, let today be your Manasseh and your Ephraim. Put the past in the past under the blood of Jesus and go into the future with faith in God that the Lord is going to make you fruitful even in the land of your affliction because He's the God of new beginnings. A new start begins with new life in Jesus Christ. If you don't know Him, Our prayer is that you will trust Him today as your personal Savior. If you do know Him, realize that each believer should determine to make this year a new beginning of obedience to God. For more resources on walking with Christ, please visit us online at scottpauley.org.